The roads are dotted with Chinese EVs, but now I finally have an Indian counterpart. And unlike the Chinese EVs that were researched and designed for elsewhere, this one's made in South Asia, designed in South Asia, and built for South Asia. So this is the Mahindra XUV 400 EV and it comes with a 39.5 kilowatt hour high density lithium ion battery and it delivers anywhere between 250 to 280 depending on your driving in terms of range. Under the hood the car comes with a 110 kilowatt PMS motor which produces 310 newton meters of torque which gets you up to 150 kilometers per hour and does a 0 to 100 in 8.3 seconds. The car is also built with our roads in mind with 190 mm of ground clearance for just a 2.6 meter wheelbase car. It's also got practicality in mind with 378 liters of boot space at the back that can be extended via folding down the seats in that 60 is to 40 ratio and it comes with a spare tire and let me tell you a bit about charging on this car Mahindra claims that this car which has a CCS type 2 port here's your AC charger and this together is your DC charger can charge in DC rates of up to 50 kilowatts which means a 0 to 100 charge in a little over an hour and up to 80 percent in about an hour but Mahindra Nepal provide you both a portable granny charger as well as a fast AC charger the slower granny charger will take 3.3 kilowatts and will take about 13 and a half hours about 13 hours an overnight charge basically to get you to 100% but you can also upgrade and use that 7.2 kilowatt fast AC charger that this car does accept which will bring it down to about 6.57 hours so like a proper one night charge unlike the other oh and what's cool about this car is that all that heat production from charging and discharging it's all managed by a liquid cooling thermal management system but Enough of me telling you about the numbers. Let me hop onto the driver's seat now and tell you what this car is actually like behind the wheel. Let me be clear, Mahindra have certainly come a long way when it comes to refinement. And not just in drivability, but also when it comes to like interior quality and like overall feelings in the car and the thing that you need to keep in mind about this car is that its base origination was the ICE XUV300 that they beefed up a bit into an electric platform and then this variant that's available in Nepal is the repackaged and further refined sort of EL Pro variant that is sold with more features like traction control ESP added onto it. Straight off the bat, this car provides three driving modes. Well, four. Fun, which is like an eco mode, a fast mode, and a fearless mode. So basically you're eco, normal, and sport mode. The thing about fun mode is that this is the mode that you need to play around with the accelerator a bit more to get more out of that engine the remaining two modes fast and fearless all hell breaks loose with that 110 kilowatt motor with over 300 newton meters of torque you just zip through in city <laughs> this car is really good on performance this car also surprisingly if you shift if you press the gear knob and take it down one more from drive it shifts into an l mode not sure what L stands for, but it's basically Mahindra's version of one pedal driving. Just like in my last review for the Nissan Leaf, 
where you could technically just drive with one pedal on the accelerator and while regeneration is not that strong in this car it does do the trick and it does give you that new ev experience of just being able to manage city driving with your foot solely on the accelerator speaking of brakes on this car it does feel ample for a car of this scale there are four disc brakes on each wheel and that in pair with the regenerator brake from the different modes of driving and l mode is more than ample to handle your daily dosage i do wish that there was some physical button setting that you could like change the regenerative mode settings when it comes to drivability and handling you obviously can't forget suspension on this car it's a mcpherson strut at the front and then twist beam at the rear and what Mahindra have done really cool with this hardware is that it's changed its dampening intensity due to the on the frequency of the bumps which basically changes the variation in rebounds and like dampening depending on what sort of road you're on a smoother tarmac versus a rough road versus something with a lot of potholes and so suspension really feels nice in city speeds like really glides through everything and the fact that this is a heavier ev thanks to that battery pack underneath you barely feel that heavy load it's really good refinement there the next thing is your steering wheel it's like a bottomed uh, bottom straightened out steering wheel and they have definitely made it according to south asian roads where it's very light a little bit of input will quickly translate to some sort of output and because it's light you can quickly maneuver around potholes and obstruction in traffic honestly you really don't have to worry too much about it being on the heavier side however in my testing when i did increase these city speeds to highway speeds this steering wheel did feel on the lighter side for those cruising speeds but again as long as you're not too fidgety with the steering wheel you should just be fine what i really loved about this car though is this seating position the ergonomics of the seat are okay but the seating position keeps you in this very high position a very tall and commanding sort of position the horn on this is pretty damn good by the way again made for south asian roads that horn will really tell people hey i'm coming make way you're in this very tall upright commanding position where you have a clear view of the bonnet in front and then your mirrors because this is a mid-size segment suv you exactly know where the rear wheels as well as the back of the car is so whether you are a beginner driver or just want good visibility while driving in busier roads in city core areas this is definitely the vehicle to get on all right so for the exteriors on this car you can see these chrome highlights at the front and it's a proper satin th copper theme all around the car that i'll show you starting off with the front bonnet you do not have hydraulics it is hydraulic fluids though on the left hand side for battery liquid cooling the purple fluids even down here a 12 volt battery your fuse box your ac to dc converter and all those orange wires you see are the high voltage wires you also have your radiators for ac right down below anyway closing that let's begin straight right here with the twin peak mahindra rebranded logos and the x's all over the bonnet no air intake needed it's an ev these x's by the way mean mahindra's new thematic area of exploring the impossible as they claim your front have very sharp looking headlights the drls on this car are led and the headlights are projector and you also come down to have fog lights at the side more satin copper detailing here and then i think this is my favorite angle the front three quarter angle which really goes around and extends all the way to the back right at the front here is your charging flap let's keep that closed and coming down below you have your 
tires, which are Apollo tires, 20565R16. So these are diamond cut alloy wheels, 16 inch. And you want to check out my Citroen EC3 review, link above, if you want to know what those numbers mean. And coming to the side, you have very flush, straight, simple sort of design. These are automatically adjustable and foldable mirrors with side lights integrated to them. Same body color door handles and again that satin copper color roof on top with heavy duty looking roof rails though I'm not sure how much they are able to hold in terms of load. And then these very strong bulky muscular sort of contours at the back over your rear wheel and you do have a shark fin antenna and you do have a sunroof which is supposed to be anti-pinch at the back here you have again that very almost tall masculine sort of rear view and there is a rear spoiler on top with a tail light thank you mohendra for a rear view wiper and then at the back are these trident sort of looking headlights leds at the back by the way you do have your reversing camera here another twin peak mohendra logo in satin copper your xuv 400 logo and then another headlight on this side you do have parking sensors and some reflectors at the bottom all right let's check out the interiors on this car Nice and very spacious sort of hard plasticky door panels. You have your mirror folding, your mirror adjustment, an auto up down for your driver, as well as locking your door and locking the window panes in case you have kids at the back. Two, one's probably an umbrella holder, one's a big bottle holder, and you definitely have more space for the rest. You have your headlight angle adjustment here and your traction ESP control here AC vent again with that satin copper highlight you're going to see this around not just in the exterior but also the interior of the car and then push brake and your start button is on the left hand side as for the interior on this car you have two 10.25 inch screens that sort of dominate your infotainment cluster and your driver's display. Let's start off with the driver's seat first. Your horn is in the center and you have your media controls on the left hand side. The sound system is quite good on this. Good bass but very good mids and lows especially. The treble is really top notch. Your pickup cancel and then your cruise controls are on the right hand side your cruise your distance setting your speed setting as well as all the buttons to go through your driver's display are all over here i'll go through all of this and this in depth in another video so stay tuned for that on the right hand side are your indicators that's a very different sort of indicator sound for sure and then your headlights are these toggles here you also have your fog light switches here on the left hand side are your wipers and then this toggle here is for your rear as for adjustability on this car mahindra do provide this lever on the side for up and down movement and then your seat height reach adjustment can be toggled through this lever at the bottom with your angle reclination and your seat height through these levers on the side. Moving on towards the center console is where I think Mahindra has placed most of its focus on revamping. So there is the 10.25 inch display with four speakers and two tweeters on this car. The interiors are leatherette with nice perforation and you have a lot of these again satin copper highlights everywhere. There are a lot of these chunkier buttons at the bottom for HVAC controls, your mode, your fan speeds, turning it off, defrosters, air circulation and whether you want a dual zone climate by the way one for the left side and one for the right side. You do have 
AC vents at the back too, which I'll show in a bit. And then you have like these sleeker sort of buttons as you go higher up on the center console. You do have two USB-A outlets, by the way. And there is a wireless charger down here. And then your driver's glove box is very, very deep. Like here is the owner's manual that you can stuff all the way inside then coming down to your center console you have your bmw like gear stick where you push the brake press for park press this unlock button on the right hand side and front for reverse where it will automatically turn on the camera it does not have any guiding lines so but it does have parking sensors one down for neutral and then another down for drive and then one more down for L which is the one pedal driving that I was talking about Let's leave it in park for now car does have a bit of hill assist but you do have to use your handbrakes and again without the clutch and gears this is very easy there are two cup holders there but again cup holders not bottle holders and then you do have a bit of a cubby in, underneath your armrest and on top your sunroof and then you have a sun shade holder there you also have sun visors that open out all right and coming to the rear seats of the car more hard plastics but soft right where your elbows meet copper again big bottle holders leatherette materials you do have isofix points at the back for a baby seat if you want and then a proper armrest with two cup holders again not bottle holders and moving into the cabin seat there is a bit of a flexible rope there but i really don't understand the point because it's not like it's gonna hold anything probably must just be for aesthetics not sure quite confusing but anyway you have two ac vents at the back which i really love about this car again more copper and then you have a usb c port with a phone holder slot so in case if you are charging your phone you can just have it plugged and kept here although I would be careful about this when you're in bumpy roads this might tend to shake or even fall off if hit at the right angle and then way at the bottom you do have a 12 volt outlet in case you want to put more than just one charger or have a USB A. the main bit about this car is definitely your rear passenger comfort which i think is quite lovely your legroom space even with my driving position at the front which is i'm about five foot nine is phenomenal great knee room footwell room also feels like you're in a much bigger segment suv and then you have these tall body panels with good view outside ample amount of storage room back here and so even if you were three large size adults I don't feel any problems with that. You also have a bit of a phone holder on the sides. There is very little center hump and so even if you are sitting right in the middle there is good padding on the bottom side of the armrest so I think this is going to be a great spot to sit even if you're stuck in the middle for these longer drives. You do have three headrests all over at the back. have been a bit more critical and detail oriented on this Indian take of an EV and honestly that's because I have aspirations that like Chinese EVs these same Indian EVs make it and break into the international market in the same way and I feel like this car does have that potential. It's Mahindra after all and their vehicles are known to be on the performance oriented side and it definitely is on top of its pretty decent rough roading capabilities that 
decent wheelbase with tall clearance even in the places I took it it really didn't bottom out and because the wheels were close by the front and the back the dip and the approach and the departure ankles were pretty good on this car wouldn't call it an off-roader but definitely a rough roader it's also probably one of the widest cars in this mid-size suv segment which means on top of functionality comfort is also on the really good side especially if you're in the back seat where there are three adult passenger seats you have enough shoulder with room that even on these longer stretches of drive passengers really shouldn't be complaining too much if you are heavy footed or if you are accelerator happy where you just like to like dab on it a lot do expect some amount of wheel spin especially if you're in the two ladder modes and especially fearless mode <laughs> and i think that's where my main gripe with this car comes because the top end performance still needs some amount of calibration left when you're really pushing the car to the limits i feel that you need to work more as a driver so that you need to manage that wheel spin this lighter steering wheel on heavier on faster long touring roads you need to be less proactively finicky with it so that this does not translate to movement in the cabin and onto passengers so because like at the end of the day when you're cruising or when you're behind the wheel for hours at a time how much of that proactiveness will you actually be doing behind the wheel does that make sense sometimes you just go on autopilot and the car just goes and you kind of want these software functions and everything to work out for you also l mode though does the trick of regeneration and one pedal driving when it comes to like downhills declines like i am now your foot does need to be on the brake just so that the car doesn't roll away it doesn't pick up speed per se but it doesn't necessarily slow you down but what speaks to me the most about this xuv 400 ev is that it's indian made and so it's definitely going to keep your maintenance costs low it's an ev first of all and so your monthly bill of electricity is not exactly going to be too high compared to your petrol vehicle and then the one pro bit about this ev other than its durability is also the cost of these spare parts because they're indian made to their chinese counterparts are at least in this part of the world always going to be cheaper than everything else and so even if you do need to replace parts you do have a bit of financial cushioning there because indian parts are just naturally cheaper oh and speaking of after sales on this car what i think mahindra did really great about this was it provided eight years of warranty on not just the battery but also the motor usually most companies provide half the amount of time for motor warranty but mahindra definitely gave you that peace of mind overall mahindra is really known just like this vehicle in front the scorpio for its rough roading and a bit of off-roading capabilities like the bolero the scorpio we've all come to love it for that sense of adventure this car can bring along to its users but they've also upped their game in recent years if you've noticed with the groundbreaking xuv 700 which is very different from its usual scale of refinement they've really upped the game in terms of features and technology and they've also made a breakthrough in the electric market for over a decade but with smaller micro cars you may have seen the riva and then the ituo which were honestly legendary vehicles for breaking into the public eye with what ev vehicles were capable of especially when fuel prices fluctuated like crazy the last decade here is the xuv 400 and it's honestly mahindra's first attempt at a proper modern ev with all its features and range and functionality 
Mahendra have definitely done a very commendable job when it comes to covering the basics. It's very well balanced. However, now I do feel that there is a bit of room to improve on the tiny refinements that will definitely put this car in a class of its own. And if this car today in 2024 is already this well balanced and capable, then I honestly, as a reviewer, auto enthusiast, or just a daily driver, can't wait to see and test out the future of what this car and company holds. Anyway, that was me. And this is it for this review. So let me know what you think of it and whether you would go for this or not. Drop a comment down below and I will see you on the next one.